so <laughs> <laughs> hi cody <laughs> there's no way for me to like segue into this smoothly <laughs> uh, just let this be your welcome into your day hi hello yeah, oh yeah at like 10 p.m <laughs> the night before this is supposed to go up <laughs> this is probably gonna be late i'm sorry <laughs> Hi guys, Hello. and folks, Hi. and friends. Welcome to the Twilight. I feel like we never say the name of the show at the beginning. So welcome um, to Winter the Twilight. I'm Cody, that's Allie. <laughs> we host this program. <laughs> this a program. This yes. educational <laughs> social yes. experiment? Audio Holy journey? fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's like the best way to describe this, honestly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, all those things. <laughs> Wow, I'm so <laughs> proud of you for that, honestly. <laughs> I just straight up the dome, you know? Wow. Cody, how was your day? Uh, my day was great. <laughs> how was your day? So, Cody, as you know, I uh-huh. work in this lovely world called retail. Yep, I'm aware And of it. Yep. Um, this week, there was this new update from, you know, our good old pals of Pokemon Go. Sure. And oh, you still play that? That's fun. <laughs> no, I do not. Um, but all okay. of the okay. <laughs> all the good old pals that uh, come to my mall do. Oh, uh, so, see. so I had this, I had this couple come mm-hmm. in to my store today, and while the woman was purchasing things, there was the man standing at the register mm-hmm. with his phone out, and I was like, hey, so how about that new Pokemon Go update? And he was like, yeah, man, Ash Ketchup is great. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh... Okay, you need <laughs> to, like... Ma- okay, I'm sure he's a regular, probably you see all the time, come nope. on in. No, no, nope. uh, he is now, because you are going <laughs> to finesse this relationship between me and him from now on, because that's my soulmate, that's just, I just, I <laughs> <laughs> And, um, so, I, <laughs> I just can't <laughs> I was very, I was very shook by that. Um, Clearly, and I was like, "It's like, yeah, man, going to the food court's great because the gym's right there. Here's your receipt. Please leave my store so I can explode from laughter." So and it was uh, wild. So he goes to this food court, right, and gets like a hot dog with ash ketchup on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was so shook. Cody, I could not. I could see you, like, at the register, like, shaken to the core. Just, like, not even know. It's like, uh uh-huh, yeah, sure. sure. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that the the receipt was, like, trembling in my hands because I could not handle it Please sign this, please, God. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought, I wish it was one of those times where it wasn't something that was, like, enunciated properly, so it could have just been, like, a trick of my ear. No, it was, like, a very ash ketchup. Like, oh, no. the the pee was popping in that moment. <laughs> I... no, that reminds me of back in the day, and probably still now, because my mom used to always say Pokemon. Absolutely not. Like, no. Abso- no, like absolutely, yes. No. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, that was, like, the hype of, like, the show at least coming out because my brother is yeah. like 10 years older than me so like he was a young tween or a teen when that was happening sure yeah it's <laughs> just my mom always says i think to this day we'll say pokemon or pokemon yeah i love those pokemans yeah it's great it's like mom <laughs> come on mom now. please don't <laughs> <laughs> my soul it's hurting stop <laughs> oh fuck i've been waiting all day to tell you about that wow well, it was worth it, you know. Honestly, it was. It was worth me not spitting on that man. Like, it was a good thing that I wasn't, like, <laughs> drinking water while one of my coworkers was doing that, because oh, I honestly would have lost it. Yep, yep. That's very there's a character. <laughs> there's a lot of things that I have to just kind of, like, hold it together when people say during my job, and I'm, I'm pretty... Fair. 
I've honed my skills. I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but I have honed my skills. Yeah. There's growth. Um, cause I, I definitely do not have a papa poker face. Um, yeah. but that one, absolutely not. I was gone, girl. Couldn't do it. So yeah. So there's a uh, five minutes host, gone. <laughs> yeah. We host a podcast about Twilight in case you've forgotten. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This and is a Twilight this podcast. Week, we read Midnight Sun, which is not Twilight, but it's Twilight adjacent. So if you call, could remember about three, four months ago when Cody and I made a pact, like, no more than 40 pages a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yo, if there's one thing that is good about this podcast, it's been doing wonders for my Goodreads goal. Like, I'm killing it because of this podcast. Yeah, good job. I mean, I would say it's, like, very consistently reading. We're not getting through a lot of books. Right. But we're definitely consistently reading. As far as 2017 nice. is concerned. I've read two Twilight books, <laughs> so... Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But I wanted to, before we got into, like, the actual bits and bobs of what happened, because it's very similar to, like, what we just read, so it would be kind of weird to, like, rehash all of that. Oh, you whatever. didn't want to go through the whole plot of I Twilight again? I wanted to again? go chapter by chapter, clearly. Um, Please. But, but yeah. this this book was... Well, it was in 2008, so I wanted to know, like, when that was in relationship to all the other Twilight stuff that was happening, and also your relationship with it coming out like were you like the ones who did you like read the leak when it came out and all that stuff or like what was your time frame of that <laughs> so <laughs> yeah sorry to bring you back to a dark place but so this was the time during my freshman year of high school this okay. was when i read this book sure. and i oh, oh god <laughs> um like i cannot um I definitely read this with my MacBook on, like, the lowest setting oh of brightness God. possible, <laughs> like, underneath my covers, like, trying to read it in the middle of the night, yeah. and, like, the middle of the night for me was, like, 11 o'clock, because your girl could not stay up late. Fair. So, me burning the midnight oil was, like, 10.30 at night, <laughs> and I was just like, I need to finish this thing. Yeah, so that was me at, what the fuck? How old are you when you're a freshman in high school? Uh, like, um, 15? Yeah, 14. 14, 14 yeah. 15. Um, just, like, salivating over <laughs> Stephanie Meyer's works of art. Yeah. So that was me. <laughs> and so for like general plot bits, this is Twilight, but from Edward's perspective. And yes. she, um, it was like, this was like, I, from what I read, it was like, or in the, when I was reading it, it said like fourth draft. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> and it was like, it's pretty long. It's like 250 pages or something. It's like, you know, a, a big chunk of the book. But um, yes. people kept leaking it yeah. illegally. And she was like, you know what? Fuck all y'all. <laughs> and then just said, this is going to be on hiatus indefinitely. Fuck you guys. You suck. Yeah, and then that's... she like leaked it herself through her website for the yep. fans or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what Stephen Meyer does in 2008 when she needs a publicity grab. Um, Stephanie, <laughs> God. Was this after, were there any other books in between this was like was new moon and the other stuff out by this point um so it was 2008 so it's been a couple years since. yeah yeah so because twilight came out in 2005 mm -hmm. let me double check yeah it says new moon new. 2006 eclipse, oh yeah so the new moon was out then, so it was even after eclipse oh yeah and breaking so, dawn was 2008 damn so yeah holy shit god wow uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yeah, then this must have been after all of them, if not bef maybe before Breaking Dawn, but... Yeah, and probably around the same time the movie came out, correct? Yeah, because the movie came out in 2008. Yeah, damn. So this was definitely a promotional thing. This is late in the thing. game, yeah. Because it looks like she uploaded it on her website in mm. February 2009. Oh, that's cute, because we're doing it in February. Wow, look at that. That's cute. Timely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> timely, I say, as it's been, like, <laughs> forever. Almost um, a decade. <laughs> ew, that's gross. Stop. <laughs> um, so she uploaded this to her website mm. after the movie was out. Okay, cool. So, and so Breaking Dawn had already been out as well. Interesting. Fantastic. 
love it. Uh, now that I'm on uh, the Goodreads page for Midnight Sun, I do want to yes. read you an excerpt of a review. <laughs> please, honestly, please. <laughs> so, I would love nothing so more. So there's like 30 reviews, one of them being mine. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and, um, I mean, not, I don't really put a lengthy review. I usually just say, like, hey, I read this for the podcast. Link, link, link. Because I'm... Amazing. A hoe for the plug. <laughs> that feels but, really meta, since yeah, we're truly. recording right now. Wow. But, um, so there hasn't been a review since, like, 2011, which is really chill. I love um, that. And <laughs> this one by Steph Sinclair, who gave it two stars, uh, said, About three things I was absolutely positive. First, Edward was a stalker and a creeper. Second, there was part of him, and I didn't know how potent that part might be, that suffered from manic depression. And third, I was strangely and unashamedly entertained by it all. Do you want to know a secret? Yes. I definitely read that person's blog post about oh Midnight Sun God. to prepare for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know that they left a, a yeah. like a Goodreads as well. Yeah, That's no. fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I said that I like I read that part on their uh, blog and I died a little. It's so pretty I, good and like it's I'm great. not gonna fight it. I I like it. It's just I was just like oh because it was like bolded on their blog right, post. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's great. I love that. I love that a lot because they're not wrong. No, um, not at all. Like I did. Boy Edward has a it? question mark. <laughs> has a the most like textbook depression though yes. the thing. Oh my god, it's so like, uh, boy. But I will say that this so book depressed. does a lot of um a lot of damage control to try to like make Edward this really likable guy. So Almost much. to the point where I'm like, I don't now that I, now I hate him more because you're trying so hard to be like. Look, see, look at all this backstory. He's a troubled youth. You can see why it does all this creepy stuff. Blah, 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 blah. I agree with that. Yeah. I think I I ended up reading Midnight Sun more than I read Twilight, I mm-hmm. would say. Like, especially the first book. Right. And so this is the, the Edward that I know. I was right. like, mm-hmm. l- hashtag likable. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I would say, like, especially during my first readings, um, like, 14 me, like, sure. 14-year-old me, this was the, the Edward that I knew, not, like, the Twilight Edward right. kind of thing. The one that's, like, actually, like, a shit show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and you can definitely tell, especially as I was reading it this time around, that it's definitely a, a damage control of, like, look, he's definitely not creepy, even though mm. she's talking about him being, like, a peeping Tom and shit. Right. <laughs> like, it's chill. <laughs> yeah. I definitely am not fantasizing about killing Bella in her house where no one can hear her screaming. It's totally okay. fine. Okay, that's how I want to segue into, like, the actual plot of this book. Because Go the on. one, the, the wildest banana bread part of this entire... <laughs> Look. Don't bring banana bread into this. <laughs> banana bread did nothing. <laughs> banana, banana bread is, is pure I just and safe. Say, it's, it's, I heard someone use it as a uh, a supplement for bananas today, and I just need to oh, use I that. Oh, I love that. Bread. Right? Right? See? Okay. So, <laughs> but thing- also, <laughs> what? banana bread did nothing wrong. And no, yeah. It's- <laughs> banana bread is innocent. It's a, it's suffering from my poor vernacular. I apologize. <laughs> I retract it. I retract it. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, bleep it out. Like, it's not... <laughs> of all the things, <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah if nobody you know, knew what we were talking about and it was just bleeps. <laughs> that'd be good. <laughs> like, what would they think we were saying that was so bad that, like, of our mouths it could not come out? <laughs> yeah, that had to be really bad for <laughs> Oh, God. So, oh, that's great. what I was going to say <laughs> was that <laughs> the thing that isn't made clear in Twilight, but is exceptionally clear in Midnight Sun, oh, is that wow. Edward wants to fucking eat Bella for, like, the majority of this thing. And not, like, sexual. Well, not, not well, totally sexually, <laughs> but, like, like, in a vampiric way, like, I would say. The interactions between Bella and Edward in Twilight in the beginning are very much, like, not talking to each other and kind of, like, having a restraint from each other for various reasons. Mostly because Bella thinks that Edward hates her. Right. And they just never resolve it. She's not wrong. Which, yeah, not wrong. 
But on Edward's side, he is literally, like, controlling every muscle of his body not to physically tear Bella apart. Like, right. he wants to murder her, like, in cold blood. He has fantasies yep. of, like, killing her and then killing all the witnesses in their classroom. And it's just bananas, y'all. Like, it's just, it's so, like, something that I did not get from Twilight, but is, like, such a main factor of Midnight Sun. Yeah, she, you can tell that Bella is very self-consumed with just getting through uh-huh. her day. Yeah. That especially that first day that you are so blatantly unaware of the fact that he is literally wanting to kill like he is chomping at the bit. At the most that literal first way <laughs> that phrase can be Honestly. Done. <laughs> like salivating at the mouth, seeing her as a literal steak. Yeah. Like they do in the cartoons. Yes. Like it's very obvious. It's fucking wild it's that she could wild. not tell. Oh my god. Especially, and my favorite thing is, like, reading through the the office scene, mm-hmm. too. And it's like, Bella, how did you not notice? Yeah, come like, on. You can sort of tell that he doesn't like you from your point of view, Bella, but, like, he really doesn't like you. <laughs> come on, oh my girl. God. <laughs> Bells. <laughs> like... Also, uh, low-key, my favorite thing is that Eric's last name is Yorkie. <laughs> like, um... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just, I just had to say. Um, how did you feel about <laughs> Edward having the biggest pity party, um, ever to exist in the world? The amount of times that Stephanie Meyer wrote why in a page was, yeah, like, the most. Yeah, like, why in italics and just kind of, like, oh, woe was me, God. Li- but, like, a literal woe was me. Yeah, like, literally. why did she have to come here? Why did she have to exist? <laughs> it's so wild, right? Because the thing that also, I think, is a big difference between Midnight Sun and Twilight is that we see Edward going from, like, I want to kill her and, like, I want to eat her, and I can't, I literally physically cannot be next to her. I need to, like, separate yep. myself. I need to leave. I need to leave Forks. I need to get out of here, whatever. Right. And then to, like, I'm in love with her. There's no anything in between there. Where I think oh, in Twilight, not. there was more of, like, a connection almost. Because at least from Bella's perspective, she was fantasizing about him from the beginning in a more, like, sure. oh, like, he's cute. And also, like, does he like me? Does me? Does he not? that whole situation happening. Right. And from Edward's perspective, it's just like, don't look at her, don't look at her, don't look at her, you're gonna eat her, don't look at her, don't smell her, don't smell her, don't smell her. And then, I'm in love with her, I cannot live without her, how do I make this work, with all also her still being a human and me being a vampire. Yikes, 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 everything's awful, oh my god, ah. Right. Which is so strange. He literally flipped some sort of switch. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Like, literally, I don't know how it happens and all the vampire bros are on board they're like yeah sure in love with a human totally yes great that's totally natural progression that this story would take Mm -hmm. yes (laughs) yep i just Mm. i do like in the beginning that edward for some reason does not understand how klutzy bella is until like honestly until he listens to the thoughts of the people in the school they're saying like jesus christ can she get a grip for like one second and then (laughs) he's like Oh, fuck. (laughs) Like, she's a train wreck. Like, bro, at one point, he thought she was graceful, and I just have, how? What? That's my favorite thing. I just, (laughs) how did that happen? I don't, the most, like, acutely aware person in the entire building doesn't get that Bella, like, is tripping over herself at any chance she is given. Oh, my God. (laughs) How did that happen? How? And you had to, like, oh, read no. Mike Newton's mind to figure that one out? Really, Edward? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. First of all, yes. fuck Mike Newton. Yes, fair. Um, And second of all, there was so much Mike Newton in this. No, I you know forgot. What? Reading this, I understand your complete blatant hatred for Mike Newton to a level that I wouldn't have understood <gasps> before. Because... Oh, my God. No, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Reading Twilight, I didn't get, like, your murderous rampage towards Mike Newton. <laughs> and to an extent, I still don't because it was kind of bananas. But 
because we didn't see him as much as we saw him in Midnight Sun and as much of a fuckwad as he was in Midnight Sun. Because yes. literally half of this book is Edward going, Mike Newton is a fuckwad. And just listening to his thoughts and being like, what That's... an asshole. <laughs> so I understand, and especially you saying that you read Midnight Sun more than anything else. Like, that makes yeah. so much sense that that would be that connection, that would be that Mike Newton for you. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, after Twilight, that is not the picture that we get of him. Sure, that's he's, true. like, just this dumb little white boy, like, that's fine. But this, him and Midnight Sun is, like, a completely different thing. It's so wild. Yeah. Like, I... <laughs> oh, my Edward, God. like, can see into his brain, as he does with, like, everyone else. And it's just, like, always him thinking about Bella in, like, really gross scenarios and, like... Just him critiquing the vampire squad and, like, shitting on Edward all the time, which is funny because Edward can hear everything that he's saying. I know! <laughs> just, like, so much. So much of this novel is Mike Newton, and I didn't know that that was going to happen, and I'm just very confused by it. But, like, I, mean, I totally so... get it now because <laughs> there's so much of it. Literally, like, Midnight Sun should be called Fuck Mike Newton. Truly! Like, it's... That's the book! Like... <laughs> An ode to Mike Newton. Yeah. Fuck you. Like, it's not... My... I think the most relatable thing about Edward, aside from the fact that he, like, one, is depressed and, like, two, hates himself, yeah. is the fact that, like, he just, like, hides in his car. <laughs> Literally, at any chance he gets, he's like, yep, I'm just gonna be here with my cities and, like, burn yep. at the world. <laughs> yep. I was like, yo, that's too relatable. That was the thing. <laughs> If I had um, a car and knew how to drive, I would also probably think that was relatable, but I don't know any of those things. Wild. I was like, how are you like immortal, but also still just like an angsty sixteen year old at the same time? He was I don't honestly like very relatable. It's so annoying. Which was, I don't yeah, which was, I was pissed. Because <laughs> like, there were some moments where I was like, oh my god. Edward, Jesus Christ, get a grip, like, none of this matters, this is all blowing out of proportion and projection, and you're being a drama queen, and then on the other hand, I'm like, yeah, but, like, same. <laughs> like, I get I know. it. <laughs> there are some things that, even though I skimmed most of this, because, like, it's the plot, and we know the plot, sure. there's some things about this that were just, like, golden gems that I did love, though. Yes. Like, from that office scene, when he's talking to the the lady whose name is Mrs. Cope, mm-hmm. fucking lol, um, <laughs> and she's, like, swooning over Edward, and she's, like, too young, too young, oh and she's God. chanting it to it's herself. So good. I could not handle that. I was dying. It was really oh my God. nice to for to be in his brain because you could also hear everyone else in the reactions to the stuff going yeah. on in the plot because you wouldn't get that in Twilight because it was the Bella show and that was understandable but like yep. I didn't know what the fuck like was going on between uh what's her face not Jessica but the other one um Lauren no or Angela bitch- yeah Angela Angela and, like, this dude, <laughs> like, she had this whole subplot that was really cute. And, like, we didn't mm-hmm. get to hear any of that in Twilight. And I thought that was nice to hear from that. Yeah, we were talking about Angela, like, two episodes ago. Like, Angela, who? Right. <laughs> like, it's a... <laughs> Escape my memory. And, also, and now... Uh, uh, Edward uses Angela sort of, like, um, a nice portal into Bella's life. Because, like, being in Jessica's head is, like, a literal nightmare. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> He's like, no, thank you. It's always like, ooh, Mike Newton. And also like, fuck all these people. I don't have, I hate all my friends. And it's like really negative space. And Angela's like this just pure little cinnamon roll. That's great. Yeah. And like just has the best intentions for everyone in this book. And like, I wish we heard more from her. I know. She's great. I love Angela. I wish there was a way for Angela and Edward to be friends. Like, yeah, my my personal headcanon is that they're in some sort of like advanced class together. Sure. That (laughs) we don't know about. Right. At all. And that like they sit next to each other, not close because like Edward doesn't have friends, you know, (laughs) Um, (laughs) but like he's just like chill with her. Yeah. And that just like makes me feel at peace personally. How did you feel about him running off to Alaska? <laughs> I just, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the Denali clan. Uh, we actually get backstory about Edward running away for yeah. that first time. Yeah. That was interesting. There were some characters that were mentioned once and then never again, which was nice. Which was, like, really chill. <laughs> we will learn more about them Oh, later. I'm sure. But it was just, like, 
cool. This like nymph water lady is just chilling here, <laughs> and like, and they're b- gone fucking girl. beautiful, which yeah. is so annoying. Right, unfair. Um, why do yeah. all of these? Okay, first of all, why do all of these like super natural people have to also be charmingly beautiful? Like that's not fair. You're I all powerful like... and live forever, and also you're hot as shit. That's not fair to any of us. Well, I think that's like the thing, though. I think that's like how vampires work. I guess. Like I think it'd be annoying as shit to be like not even like an average vampire, but like an ugly vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Like, to be an outcast in every generation? Like, I can't think of a not hot vampire. Like even I know, as I old, don't think that's e- how they work. Even as old as he was, fucking Nosferatu can get it, you know, still. <laughs> I literally am ending this podcast right now. <laughs> I am gonna have nightmares for weeks. I do not want to think about Nosferatu in a sexual way. I do not want to think about Nosferatu in any way in general. Yeah, are you often thinking about Nosferatu? Honestly, I am. Because <laughs> when any lights flicker, I get very nervous and I think about Nosferatu. And you think about him? <laughs> yes, I do! Do you not? No, I immediately think of, like, ghosts. And, like, oh, I'm not scared of ghosts. I'm not scared of ghosts. I ain't ghosts, afraid of no I'm ghosts. Th- I'm not afraid I'm afraid of Nosferatu! Okay, no, hold up, hold up, hold up. I never said I was afraid of ghosts. I said if there's something freaky going on in my apartment, like the light's going on, it's obviously a ghost. That's just ghost cannon. That's poltergeist shit. Come on. No, it's Nosferatu. He's a little scam. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Allie. <laughs> and I don't want to think about him in a sexual way. Absolutely not. No, I you ruined believe, this. I can't believe you think a light flickers and you're like, oh shit, <laughs> this vampire just came and left you the last Oh, it's, you know, good old Nosferatu. No, not good old Nosferatu. <laughs> Climbing into your windows going like, let me fuck up with your light switch a little bit. Do not <laughs> talk about my windows. Absolutely not. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I like, couldn't think of any other vampires, and now that I now now the ones that I have in my brain would be even more scarring. So I'm just not gonna. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the vampire that was on that cereal box. I was gonna say the count from fucking. <laughs> oh, he could get it. Okay, so. Hold <laughs> the fuck up! I say Nosferatu can get it, and you are traumatized forever. You say the count can get it, and nothing from your childhood, no trauma there. That's fine. That's like super chill. Are you fucking kidding me? Right? I need to end this. Podcast. One is associated with fear. The other associated with rhythmic counting and safety. Okay, there's two very different things at play here. Okay, well, no, not that. Numbers. I mean, not sexually, but, like, intellectually. (laughs) You're talking to a Ravenclaw. What the hell do you expect? Oh, my God. I can't believe this is happening. (laughs) You started this. (laughs) I like that the two that we brought up are two very not, like, romance cover <laughs> vampires. No, I can't think of any other fucking vampires, okay? I'm sorry. Me either. My I'm brain like, has I'm been fine. tainted by this fucking franchise. Oh my god. Uh, <sighs> so... Was, I literally never thought those two names would come up on our podcast, so um, I don't think there's a bingo spot for that. Uh, oh my god, um, I'm crying. Uh, um, so... <sighs> <Wow>. <laughs> So, Edward is, like, super, um, moody, right? Shocking. Oh, yeah. Um, I did like, or not like, but I did notice that he was very much, uh, had hints of friend zone in there, which was, Mm. like, very, like, uh, there was one point when they were talking at the cafeteria, I think, and it was when, uh, Bella asked for the first time, like, are we friends? What's, what's good? And then he was like, oh, I don't like the sound of friends. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Because, like, oh uh, a woman's friendship is never enough. Great. I mean, I liked the idea that in all of this, we get to 
learn more about the shiny squad. Yes, that is all. That's that's a, that's one takeaway out of this. That's nice. Like there's so much backstory and just also casual conversations between them and how they work as like a unit in a family through their brains, which is nice. Yes. Like a lot of them don't speak to each other because they just like send mind messages or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's fucking cute. And, like, because you see, like, them at school, like, Jasper in class. I'm like, what? What is this? Yeah. Yeah, I love that they're, I don't know, we get more of their characters, which is, I mean, I always love, but I think it's important for you Mm -hmm. to know how they all kind of work together and more of their dynamics when Bella wasn't involved. Right, yeah. Especially moving forward as we go into New Moon. Mm -hmm. It's important to understand a little bit about how, like, Emmett works and gives Edward shit all the time (laughs) and Alice being her usual intelligent self and stuff. Can we talk about uh, Alice's, like, three visions in reference to Bella? Because that's important difference from this in Twilight, I think. <laughs> we absolutely can. What are your thoughts? Um, well, basically, it's, like, when he starts to, like, I don't even know if it's by the time he has feelings for her, but he's definitely, like, this girl's fucked up. What's happening? I want to eat her. What's what's up with that? <laughs> and then Alice has, like, these visions that are, like, yep. you're gonna, like, she's gonna be a vampire. You're gonna yep. kill her. And then, like, something else whatever those are the main those are the important ones yeah because i mean that's what we end up knowing in twilight but we get more backstory right in right. this as well yeah and, and he's all like fuck no none of these i'm fuck your future yeah. i'm gonna do what i want fuck you fuck you fuck you yeah <laughs> we see, i feel like we see a lot of edward denying everyone's powers <laughs> in this literally book. always yeah <laughs> just just stop trying to change how things work here this has been I, your life for, like, a hundred billion years. Come on now. Stop trying to change shit now. Me always. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just think that it's funny that anything that's slightly inconvenient for him, he's like, fuck this, fuck you, fuck your life, like, I'm out. I believe start right all the time, maybe, so, like, <laughs> fuck you. And I, I love I that want. most of the time Alice's response is just to, like, stare at him yeah. like not even give him the satisfaction of a response yeah. <laughs> and he's just like fuck <laughs> or just like I, don't... I do like the idea that like alice would send like passive aggressive visions <laughs> to edward if he was <laughs> off. it's like oh you're gonna do that well here's what happens if you keep on that path <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i thought that was really funny because i didn't really get fully grasped but like like she saw she had visions but like i don't know the the realm of like how they saw each other's brains and stuff and their thoughts like i didn't see it as like a whole chat room kind of thing like they were doing <laughs> sort of like <laughs> yeah instead of actually communicating they just kind of like send messages in their brains so like the fact that she like literally sends like an mp4 of like <laughs> a vision she had in the future is so yeah funny. it's like <laughs> aim up in there literally and i think that's really it could be used for comedy and i appreciate that <laughs> right I, we get so much more education in Midnight Sun, yes. which is fucking wild. <laughs> yes. um, more of Fort High, which is all we've ever wanted. Yeah, I I really needed that in my life. I forgot, <laughs> I don't know how I forgot, about Spanish class. <gasps> yes! Um, <laughs> and the fact that Edward and Emmett having class together is my favorite it's thing. so pure. Emmett picking on Edward is my favorite thing in this whole world. It's pretty great. Just this big, bulky rock of a man <laughs> picking on this pissed off, sour puss of a, like, vampire is my favorite thing. Yeah. I also like the power dynamic of, like, Edward's the only one that's, like, a, technically a year younger in their class. Because, mm-hmm. like, he's a junior and all the rest are seniors, even though, like, nothing matters in age or whatever and even Jasper's <laughs> younger than him and just like the fact that like of course Edward's the one that's like the youngest and like the brooding just like emo kid. Yeah. it's like whatever I don't like superiority fuck you it doesn't even matter anyways fuck yeah, whatever. <laughs> we're all the same age anyway we're all fucking old as shit get out of here whatever yeah <laughs> you're not better than me yeah I love that I love that so much oh. um Ooh, I also love during this... um like uh one of their science classes or whatever we yeah. also Get reminded that, like, Edward was an actual, 
like doctor or whatever or like had new fucking science shit because he's like fuck this whatever i know this so it's like and i was like oh shit you like lived a full life before this that was wild like a whole life yeah my favorite thing is just like him drifting off into space and thinking about things and mr banner talking about science and him trying to call in edward to like spook him and stuff and him just boring into mr banner and staring at him and answering things that like he definitely didn't really hear (laughs) but he's like sort of paying attention being like I made this science. Like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. I invented science. Like, <laughs> like, stop talking. Respect. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and the reason you have a job, asshole. I, oh my god. <laughs> oh, there was something I wanted to talk about Bella about, because I feel like we haven't been talking about her a lot. Um, who? I don't know. <laughs> sorry, who is she? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's going to be narrating all the next books? Wonderful. Great. Can't wait to get back there. Great, yeah. Um, <laughs> we didn't really know what we had until we had this. And I was like, oh, it could be, like, maybe better than this, <laughs> what we had. That's good. Can't wait to go back to that trash. But um, I don't know if it was, I think it was Edward. It might have been Mike. But somebody tells her that she doesn't, no, yeah, it was Edward saying she didn't even need to have that much makeup and, like, which was, like, yikes, but it's <laughs> like, well, no, thank you, don't need, it doesn't matter, but, like, he was saying that people would pay, like, thousands of dollars to, in makeup products just to get her natural skin, which makes me wonder, Ew. what is your skincare regimen, Bella Swan? I have Ooh. questions. I want to know. I want to know that. Like, is it just I the Pacific Northwest air? Just, like, <laughs> I, <clears throat> I mean, I think, because I work in this, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> her skin would have definitely changed moving from the altitude mm-hmm. and the dryness of Phoenix fair, to yeah. Forks because it's hella moist <laughs> and the alt- and it's way north and way colder mm-hmm. in Forks. So her skincare... I mean, if she was taking care, like, in using certain products, would have definitely needed to have changed. But just, like, the way that her skin responds would be completely different in just, like, moving in yeah, that space. Sure. So I would be curious um, what she uses. Hey, Stephanie Meyer. Um, hey, hey, I know Steph. we ask a lot from you, and that's not fair, but... um. If there was one thing that we would get out of a communication with you, what's Bella's skincare like? Because <laughs> we know that she is incredibly stressed mm-hmm. and doesn't sleep well, which are two major components of, like, healthy skin. Mm-hmm. Um, and, she probably drinks I mean, a lot it's of not water. like. Yeah, so that would be good. Mm-hmm. And I, I assume because she makes a lot of her food, and I know that there are not fast food restaurants there um, in Forks that. You know, I think that she's eating a fairly clean diet. Those are two good things. But, I mean, being stressed and not sleeping a lot means that she's probably going to have a lot of dark circles and probably would be opposed to getting fine lines soon. But, I mean, She's probably got some, like, legit Korean skincare, like, on lockdown. Just, like, shit. Honestly, (laughs) I believe that. She's probably no secrets. Honestly, why doesn't Midnight Sun talk about the fact that when Edward comes into her room late at night, she's, like, not wearing, like, masks and yeah, right? shit? Like, that's what I want to know. <laughs> this seems fake. Those are the things that I care about. Um, so, I have a question for you. Yes. How do you feel about, on page 59, the amount of italicies that are there? Oh, no, there's so much when, already. Let me get to When this. Edward was describing Bella almost dying from Tyler's van. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because no, that... he's saying, oh, for th- the love of all that was holy, would the catastrophes never end? Yeah, like... Emphasis on the no. italicies that are there. You um, can't be... You can't expect to be taken seriously as a writer. <laughs> Do right. this stuff. There's just, like, so much. I just... Uh, like, we... Uh, the, for the love of all that is holy is a common phrase. People have heard that. It you is. don't need to emphasize literally every other word of that right. phrase. Yep. 
and like I am uh, like and this in italics and should <laughs> in italics and I just I don't get it. She There's... seemed all right. <laughs> like, I thought that Twilight had a lot of vitalysis in it, but like holy What fuck. sense would it make for her to trust me? <laughs> There's so much. Oh. There's so much in this. I cannot handle it. There, The one thing, though, and I mean, this is kind of throughout all of Stephanie Meyer's work, there's a lot of ableist language in it. Yeah, um, I feel like a lot more than we saw in Twilight. At least, maybe, because yes. it's at least shorter, so it's more condensed in that. Yeah. But, like, it was, there was a lot. Like, no There was a lot, which was gross. Especially Middle near the movie. end. There was, like, a lot in a row in the last yeah. couple pages. Yeah. It was no good for me, thanks, though. And also, we don't even have the excuse of 2005 anymore. Like, 2008 was shitty, too, but, like, come on, Steph. Yeah, Steph. yeah, it was definitely, like, a hard pass for me at that point. <laughs> Overall, I would say that Edward is very self-loathing mm-hmm. and is very possessive, yep. even though he tries to mask it under loving Bella. Mm -hmm. We don't really see any transition of him hating her to loving her. Like, I know that Stephanie tries to explain that it's like, well, I mean, I'm going to hell anyway, so, like, fuck it. But that's, like, Like, not really... (laughs) But, like, no. (laughs) It's, like, not really how that works. Especially because how intense he wanted... Like, he was c- considering leaving Forks and leaving all the vampire bros behind because of this. Because he didn't want to kill anyone. He didn't want to be that guy that had, like, you know, like, had a body count, you know? And then yep. the fact of being like, well, fuck it. I'm just gonna, like, put this girl in danger and also put me and everyone else that I love in danger because of this is, like, homie, did you even think? Right. Like, there was not as much inner turmoil that led to, like, an understanding or a, a reasonable departure into okay, I'm going to make this transition into being all-consuming in an emotional way with her now. Yeah. In a romantic way. Ugh. Edward. <sighs> no way. Ooh, I do like the fact that, like, um, when he was creepily, like, on her property when she was not aware, <laughs> as he often is, um, yeah. <laughs> he was looking at her reading... Uh, oh my the, god! <laughs> yeah, all the, like, Jane Austen books, and he yeah. had no idea why she was so upset. <laughs> like, she flips open a book, and then she gets mad as fuck, and he, and then she flips to another book, and he's like, <laughs> what is happening? And then she just shuts it and fucking leaves, and he's just so confused. And I thought that was funny. I love that he thought she was dreaming about him, and then she says oh Ed, god. and he's like, ugh! Oh. I just, never mind. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> I just, I was so repulsed by myself. Okay. <laughs> like, the scenes of him, like, alone in her room was just, like, blit. Oh, also, fuck. Like, it's so silly that he was like, I'm not going to touch any of her things because that would be too intimate. That would be too much. As if he's not in her bedroom while she's sleeping, looking at her and staring at her while she's I know. sleeping in her bedroom. And I'm like, it's already, we already like, passed the creepy town. You might as well just fucking go all in if you're, if you're there. Fuck it, whatever. Oh you God. have zero standards anyway. Just, like, fucking no. No. Edward, <laughs> stop. Eddie. Like, oh, God. I just cannot handle it. Ugh, Edward. You will. Ugh, Ooh, I cannot. I have a question. I have a question for you. I have an answer. Um, so, I mean, obviously... This wasn't the whole book. What scenes right? would you have liked to see in Twilight <gasps> from Edward's perspective? That's such a great question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, journalism um, school. <laughs> oh my god, that's like so great of you. Thank you. Um, well, I would have preferred, honestly, to have Edward's perspective kind of throughout the whole series. Right, for sure. Because I, I enjoy having like my favorite books are multi perspective okay that's like yeah that's like my fucking shit yeah i love that especially like eat that shit stuff oh it's so good i eat that shit up Mm -hmm. um so i love that and i would have preferred that um however i think within this i definitely would have wanted it for those like last 
two chapters. Yeah, like, for when, sure. When, when she's, like, literally dying. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I would have been really interested to see the, hid the flight, like, from yes. yeah. Forks, well, like, Forks, Seattle, and then Seattle to Phoenix. Because I feel like mm-hmm. yeah, at totally. that point, his self-loathing would have turned into, like, actual concern. Because the fact that, like, when she was, like, dying, he was, like, sobbing means that, like, hopefully right. he would have turned to, like, actual concern. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Probably would have been a really um, introspective, like, couple hours on a plane, you know? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, and I think but that But also the... with, like, a tiny bag of, like, peanuts and stuff. <laughs> fucking literally um or i just imagine like emmett like throwing them you know at him (laughs) while he's like staring out the window like brooding um and i think that the baseball scene would have been cool yeah for sure i was thinking baseball. what about you for sure um because also because we're seeing it's funny to see the baseball scene through bell's eyes because she's like what the fuck is happening literally to see it from people that do this all the time and that's like natural to them that'd be super cool because and through this book, we see their, you know, wild shenanigans is more normal and commonplace. So to see that would be kind of cool. But also, I think, like, we were just so close to getting that whole, like, Becca highlighter scene going on. And that oh would have been so much fun yeah. from our perspective. Yeah, Even though he goes, cool. like, haywire and, like, throws shit and he's, like, not chill. But I think that would have been interesting. Yeah, that would have been kind of extra, but I would have loved it. Yeah, um, yeah that would have been cool. I love that. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> so much potential. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it, you leakers. But yeah. I'm also glad because I wanted to read this, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that we read this, yeah. though. I, I do think that it was an important. I forgot that there was some essential context in this. I mean, like, I shit on this, and we all shit on this, and it's fine. But, like, I actually did genuinely like vacationing into Edward's brain for a little bit. Like, I thought it really, amongst yeah. the wildness and emotion-filled stuff that was Bella's just sense of self and, like, self-confidence issues and stuff, I feel like we saw a more neutral view of what was actually happening, if not a more broody side, but a more, like, general sense. And we got to go back to kind of the fluff stuff while still having it be actiony. Right. Because yeah. this stuff on Bella's side, mm-hmm. I mean, it was still like 250 pages, but it felt a lot longer because it was more like introspection. Mm-hmm. Whereas because of the fact that this is new and it has more stuff, it feels a little bit faster. Yeah. Which is for nice. sure. So we get to learn so much more. So for me, it felt like a quicker read. Yeah, totally. Which is nice. Ah! Hey, we did it. <laughs> we did it. 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 Bow, bow, bow. Next week, the 22nd, we are going to... It's this week, Cody. Well, okay. This week, by the time you're listening to this, on the 22nd, it's going to be lit at 8 p.m. Central Time or Eastern Time? I think it's 8 p.m. Eastern Time. 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Bow, bow, bow. 6 p.m. Forks Time. <laughs> no... 5 p.m. Oh, you're right. Sorry. I'm... I live in Forks Time. I I am Forks Time. (laughs) I invented Forks Time. (laughs) I'm so used to being in the middle and not being at the end that I totally got my times messed up. So, 5 p.m. Forks Time. You can do the math for all the other shit if you want. That's what Google is for. Yeah, Google is here for you. I'm not Google. Um, We're going to be watching Twilight. Uh, have we decided <gasps> on, we're going to do Freeform, because it has the extended. Freeform. We're going to do on Freeform. It's for free, and it has the extended. And it's... So, uh, we're using the, I love that so much. We're going to be live tweeting from our Twitter account at Into the Twilight with the hashtag Hell, yeah. Get Bit Twilight. Join along. It's going to be really fun. And then we're going to be talking about it, like, immediately after, and then you're going to see it on the pod, and it's going to be great. So, yep. do that. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh. This is Earbud Media Production. You can follow us on Twitter at Earbud Media. If you have a pitch for the network, you can do that at bit.ly forward slash Earbud Pitch. You can follow Into the Twilight on Twitter at Into the Twilight. And we also have a Tumblr page, which is Allie's greatest achievement thus far. Into the Twilight it's a boozy. Show. <laughs> dot <tumblr.com>. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a Patreon if you are so generous enough to send us your sweet, sweet dollars to us and help make the pod even better and stuff. That would be great. You can do so on Patreon. Patreon.com slash into the twilight. We would be forever grateful. And we have a lot of cute perks. You can get a shout out on the show. And you can get like a handwritten card. They're all very cute. Please God do it. Please Um, God do it. Please God. (laughs) But if you can't financially support the show, that is totally chill. 
I feel you on a spiritual and emotional level. But there are ways to, do, to support the show for free. That's right, for free. You can rate us and review us on iTunes. It takes like a minute at most, and it helps us more than literally anything else can. Like, it, it's so helpful. Yeah. So god darn helpful. And it takes like a couple seconds. It's lit. Uh, oh yeah, the survey. Um, so we can get sponsors and stuff. We have a little survey. Yeah, please. It also takes like five minutes, and it's free. So you know, do it. It's bit.ly forward slash into the survey. Bit.ly forward slash into the survey. It would help out a bunch. I noticed from that that um, like there's a gender thing that you click, and it only has male or female, which is, like, a bummer, and I'm sorry, I physically can't do anything about that, like, I can't change that, so I'm sorry. It makes me uncomfortable, too, like, we're all in the same boat, but I just, that's something I have to address, because I feel like people would look at that and be like, ah, what do I do, what do I do, crisis, and I get it, but I I have no control over that, I have no control over that, so I'm sorry. Hey, Cody, guess what? What? I thought of two peeps for our peeps. Ooh, please go ahead. So... Our artwork is made by Maddie Padilla, a.k.a. at your ghost host 44 on Instagram. Uh-huh. And our music is made by Eli Kraus, and you can find Eli's stuff at krausfilms.com. And because we always do duos mm-hmm. for those two motherfuckers that I love, even though I don't know Eli, but I don't know. He's a fucker, but I love him. I don't know him, but I love him. <laughs> oh so I thought... <laughs> um, <is> <laughs> That was like Stop. the most thing ever. <laughs> it's like a hate on my head. Um, him. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that I would do something kind of Twilight related for these two this week. And I decided sure. that these two are going to be the characters from the Totino's commercial from SNL that oh, Kristen Stewart was on. my God. We keep forgetting and to talk about that, but we will. <laughs> we'll do it. We will. We're going to talk about it next week when we talk about the Twilight movie. Yeah, I've decided. that's fitting. That's fitting. So, Maddie Padilla is going to be Vanessa Bayer's character, and who's like the suburban mom, and Eli Cross is going to be the character that's played by Kristen Stewart, who's like the French one. Great. So, Can I be the enjoy Totino's that. in this metaphor? Um, you absolutely can. Done. <laughs> and I am all the men who are definitely watching football. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There it is. That sounds about right. You can follow Allie on the internet at 23 of Me everywhere. For your Gemini goodness. Yep. Just shouts into the void from a Gemini perspective. What more could Literally you shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I know so your brand better than you ever could. <laughs> Excuse you, first of all. <laughs> and you can find me on the internet at Cody Captures or my website, CodyCrow.co. For Nosferatu bullshit. That... I mean, I feel like now I have to uphold to this promise that you've now forced me to make. <laughs> I have to do a whole rebrand now. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, if you go to my Twitter and not find Nosferatu themed pornography, call I'm sorry. Cody out. Yeah, <laughs> roast me, just <laughs> please. <laughs> so, Cody. Yeah. Fan fiction. Yes. Let's chat. Sure. So I've decided to throw in a new game for us. Okay regarding fan fiction yes. how do you feel about it i'm here for it so our new game is that i'm gonna give you four titles oh, no. for <laughs> the fan fiction this week oh, no. and one of them is the one that i'm gonna read for you this week but you have to decide which one it is so you made up a bunch of titles or are they just i'm not gonna tell you whether or not i made them up I... or if they're real <laughs> until after you have chosen oh i hate this so much. okay so, is the fan fiction that I'm reading for you today, number one, Losing Control, Okay. number two, False Dawn, Okay. number three, I'm Still Holding On, or number four, Take This Heart? They're all so bad. <laughs> also, they're all so very much could be Twilight fan fictions. Oh, I'm. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I hate this. Okay, you don't have to choose. That's okay. I'll, I can I'll choose do for you. I'll take this heart because that's stupid, and I hope it's real. Okay, that one is real. Okay, it is not the one I'm reading okay. for today. Okay. In fact, um, these are all real oh, stories. No. Um, <laughs> um. The the one that I'm going to be reading for you today is False Dawn. That was the worst one. <laughs> you kidding well, me? Well, 
Um, the other three I found the titles for because they were on a list ranked from word count. Those three um, had over 300,000 words Holy in their fan fuck. fiction. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. That's too many. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> You've gone um, too far. You pass go. You just fucking shut it down. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so I agree. Um, can you yeah. believe? So- <laughs> can you imagine that being your life? Like that being no. your thing? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. You were the person that wrote extensive Twilight fan fiction <laughs> as a career and a hobby. No. <laughs> like, what the no. Fuck? No, oh, I, I don't. God. And they're probably like um, super popular, right? Um, it looks like Probably it. Probably got yeah. a bunch of comments and people are fucking like, yes, this is my shit. There's, Take This Heart, um, has 5,000 hits Too many. on it. Too many. It's a lot of hits. Although that hit to word ratio is a little, Yeah, it's I mean, not that's great. like a lot. <laughs> it's not. It's not, not a deal. Yeah. Okay, please read this. Please <sighs> myself right Okay. Okay. So, False Dawn is written by the user Write It Like You Need It to Survive. It's too long. It's it's too long. Okay. And the summary is, it would be the height of falsity to say that I had never given much thought to how I would die. I was a morbid kid who grew into a moody teenager than a depressed adult. I assumed from a very young age that I would die in a car accident before I hit 25 too real. Mm -hmm. Didn't read that Mm -hmm. until right now. Um, And this is from chapter one. What's past is prologue. Okay. So, (laughs) um, this is, okay. And also I changed websites. I think I glowed up. Um, I didn't, I'm not from, I'm not reading from fanfiction.net anymore. First of all, I'm reading from archive of our own, which apparently is like a real thing. Wow. I've never heard of that. I don't, yeah, I don't, me either. Um, okay. So, where the fuck? Oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) okay. The whole, you can't sleep because you might never wake up thing freaked my mother out something awful. So she settled us together on the couch with a stack of takeout menus over slightly shorter than the stack of romantic comedies she intended to marathon with me. Then the habits of this lifetime took over, and instead of having my existential crisis, I focused on soothing her. It helps that I didn't want to think about all of the memories of past me. I just wanted to be the me of me now, the Bella me. Roughly 24 hours later, I was staring at my ceiling and trying to reconcile 26 years as Liz Goldstein and 12 years as Bella Swan. Bella fucking Swan. I had reincarnated as a fictional goddamn character. If that had to happen, why couldn't I have been Hermione Granger? I'm in hell. And seen. (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) I. (sighs) So, that's that. Although, I will say that I do. My inner monologue is quite often Bella fucking Swan. Like, that is I mean, true. Truly yeah. relatable. But oh my god, <sighs> fam. Yeah. No. So. It- <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So it seems like this person has um gotten a concussion of some sorts and has woken up with the memories of someone else's life, aka not Bella someone Swan. else's. Famous fictional character, Bella Swan. (laughs) I I am so mad that this exists. I mean, same. Um, Also, I didn't mention it before, but that person's username is a Hamilton reference, so I just have to mention that. So so good luck, person. Well, at least we know it's a recent fanfic. No, it is. It was published Unless, like, or they were uh, two really weeks ago. into Alexander Hamilton before it was cool. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Alexander Hamilton. They like prophesize yeah. Lynn's work. The really hardcore like two thousand and five lovers of Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> oh my god! They like leaked Lynn's work and they leaked Midnight Sun. Like they are the leakers. Yeah. So, like Anonymous fuck. is doing the people's work. You know. <laughs> Honestly, same. Must be saying forks. Get it, y'all. Bye. Bye.